This asset class is going to zero. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. Investors will face serious losses and be stunned when this unsuspecting asset class comes crashing down. Let's head over to Bloomberg, where we picked today's story up with a headline, Kathy Wood warns of serious losses in automobile debt. Kathy Wood flagged the risk of serious losses in the trillion dollar auto debt market after statistics showed U.S. vehicle prices decreased in September. The ARC management founder and CEO said a shift in consumer taste toward electric cars is leading to a drop in the price of gasoline-powered vehicles, according to a recent tweet suggesting that prices are coming down. But what do you think? Are you ready to adopt the electric revolution, or are you hanging on to your gas-powered car? I'll let you weigh in the comments because I think she's got the right idea, but I think she's wrong on what the cause will be. Woods Post follows a tweet last month warning about risk building in U.S. auto debt as vehicle loans were at an all-time high of nearly $1.4 trillion as of June 30th, according to recent data by the Federal Reserve. And the issue here is what happens when you have a slowing economy. So we go back to the pandemic and what happened? A lot of people took their stimulus checks and bought cars and paid premium prices because as dealers saw their inventory go down, they just kept their prices high and in some cases, they increased them. So now you have all this automotive debt and you have a slowing economy which means people will be struggling to make those payments but adding to this issue is the fact that a lot of these loans were negative amortized loans now if you don't know what that means it means somebody bought a new car and rolled the uh, equity the upside down the part they were upside down on in their old car into the new loan making it even a worse deal so if you think about this from the bank's perspective or from an investor's perspective because a lot of these loans now get wrapped up into bonds and sold off into the market is what could happen is you see this perfect storm of people losing their jobs or their incomes coming down. They can't afford their car payments, so they go into delinquency, then to default. And what happens to the banks that are underwriting a lot of these car loans? They go insolvent. What happens to bondholders? Well, they take massive losses. And if you think that's not possible, put it from the supply chain perspective. You've got these dealers, or not the dealers, but the manufacturers cranking out a lot of new cars. And and they'll be eager to cut prices on those, even if the used car market gets flooded, which will drive prices down even more. But the question now we should ask is, are there signs the economy is slowing? Is that even a possibility? And the answer is yes. Oil's rally stalls on concerns slowdown to erode energy demand, even though prices and crude have gone higher in the short term. Oil markets remain buffeted by concerns about the global economy and cuts announced by the OPEC. Traders are closely watching for demand signals as growth is likely to suffer from central bank's monetary policy. OPEC Plus's output cuts, which drew rebuke from the U.S., could turn out to be much smaller in reality, but a slew of leading banks that it could still send prices higher this year. And so that's a key point is we want to look at oil. What did they say? Well, the market is looking at oil prices. What are they looking at? Or for demand, they're looking at the weekly EIA data, which comes out every Wednesday to see where our inventory levels. If inventories are rising, that means demand's falling. And we can make the case, and we will hear it a little bit, of why we see the oil prices coming down even further and why OPEC's right it's a demand issue but what are they trying to raise prices for well there's a dollar shortage so they're trying to maximize every barrel of oil get as many dollars they can because when the dollar shortage gets too bad and demand comes crashing down they'll be forced to pump as much as they can and that will drive prices down even more but the next problem that Morgan Stanley sees isn't in the oil market it's with earnings seasons that's getting kicked off this week as weekly warm-up from the Morgan Stanley U.S. Equity Strategy Desk says, easy come, easy go, let's take a look of what's coming. Easy come, easy go, they said last week was another wild one with the largest two-day rallies in history followed by one of the roughest closes in recent memory. With the heart of earnings season still two weeks away, the jobs data now behind us, markets can chop back and forth, even drift higher before it becomes obvious that earnings forecasts are too high. So what Morgan's suggesting here is that, hey, investors are betting on a big earnings season and they're about to be wrong and we'll look at that more in a moment but what is the biggest driver of bringing the market down right now it's not the machines it's not retail investors it's not the corporate share buyback blackout window it's the fed and we could make the case that qe and qt doesn't have any effect on stock prices but perhaps it has more of a psychological effect and the fact that the fed is doing qt means stocks likely to head lower and that means Morgan's not getting the chop 
it's going to get chopped the other direction to the downside we would challenge that view even with recent jobs data simply due to our forecast on earnings per share and deterioration we are already seeing in cash flows in other words if our earnings forecast comes to fruition companies will have to take more significant action on labor and layoffs and early warning signs on that front are emerging as evidenced by the recent drop in job offerings as they point to the jolts leads claims by four months and one thing that shouldn't get chopped when we find out that the, how the automobile market is crashing and we're having a massive credit crisis and that's your portfolio i'll put a link up here to portfolio shield and description below because let's take a deeper look at that morgan chart and see are they right are we about to see a rise in unemployment claims well that we are here we can see the job openings and labor turnover survey that in blue overlaid against the four week moving average of initial claims. And what Morgan proposes is that yes, there's about a four month lead. If you see this blue line start to head lower, that the red line can plateau. And if it's not until the jolts data is heading down that you start to see the red line curve up. And we see that happen going into the great financial crisis. We see that again here happening, going into what was almost a recession heading into the pandemic and we're starting to see that sign again and it makes perfect sense of why this happens because employers the first thing they're going to pull is those jobs wanted signs when that doesn't turn out and work out well and the economy still slows then they lay off and what Morgan's saying is that's got a four-week lag but the question we should then ask next is what leads the jolt well if you said the stock market you're right here we can see the jolts in blue overlaid against the Wilshire 5000, the total U.S. stock market in red. And what we know is that when the stock market starts to head down, we can see the job openings then follow. And what follows after that, again, with that four-month lag, according to Morgan, is unemployment claims. And here we can see it again, the stock market heading lower, the jolts data coming down, and that does not bode well for the economy or all those who can't make their payments on their cars. But what leads, what does this mean for the oil market? Well, it means that oil prices, despite OPEC's attempt to keep prices up, is not going to pan out. Here you can see that the Wilshire 5000 in red heading lower going into the great financial crisis. As we know, stocks came down. And even though oil prices continued higher, it came literally nose diving down as the stock market continued in free fall. Here we can see the stock market going sideways heading into the pandemic, oil prices heading down, and now the market's down. This is our leading indicator. You know, people want to know where demand is headed. The stock market is telling us demand is headed down. And at a time, of course, when we head into earnings that investors are optimistic but what they're missing is the market's already telling them earnings aren't going to be good stocks face brutal earnings season with all eyes on apple investors say banks including jp morgan report this week but investors are focused on the iphone maker as a bellwether of global conditions and we already know from apple that they are concerned about being able to sell through their latest iphone the results underscore Wall Street's fear that even after this year's brutal sell-off, stocks have yet to price in all the risk stemming from central banks' aggressive tightening as inflation remains stubbornly high. The outlook isn't likely to improve anytime soon with the Federal Reserve steadfast on hiking rates, likely weighing on growth and profits in the process. Data on Friday showed the U.S. labor market remains strong, increasing the chances of a num another jumbo Fed rate hike later this month. And of course, we've talked about how it's that change in direction, that slowing of the non-farm payroll report that possibly by November, or I mean by December or even January, we could see a zero print or even a negative print putting the Fed at a point where they're tightening into a recession. And that's not gonna play out well. We know that means earnings and demand for consumer goods are going to head down. Let's continue on. Third quarter earnings will disappoint with clear downside risk to fourth quarter analyst estimates, said the head of equity strategy at Saxo Bank. The key risks to third quarter earnings are cost of living crisis impacting demand for consumer products and higher wages eating into company profits, not to mention what they keep forgetting to talk about is this massive inventory build. Now the question is, is the market right? Is the market telling us that earnings are going to come down? Well, it is. 
Here you can see in this chart, we have the Wilshire 5000 in red overlaid against corporate profits after tax. And we can note the periods of declining stock prices, either earnings flatten out, which for most investors right now would be ideal. A less than ideal situation would be like we saw going into the financial crisis where stocks came down and earnings came crashing down. That's what we're gonna find out here pretty soon is is this third quarter going to give us an indication that things are worse than we thought? And that means the fourth quarter is gonna be brutally ugly or that perhaps the profits are gonna hold tight. But one thing we can't avoid now is what's going on in the bond market because if we look at it, when we see this rapid move higher in yield and a rapid move higher in the dollar, it says things are gonna break, but is there any reprieve for the bond market? Well, perhaps not yet. The most powerful buyers in treasuries are bailing all at once as Fed, foreign governments, commercial banks are all stepping back, leading potentially to more pain until the stock market comes crashing down. From Japanese pensions and life insurance to foreign governments and U.S. commercial banks were once well, they were lining up to against their hands on U.S. government debt, most now have stepped away as the Fed is in QT mode. And then, of course, there's the Federal Reserve with a few weeks ago up the pace of plans to offload treasuries from its balance sheet to $60 billion per month, not counting mortgage-backed securities. We need to find a new marginal buyer treasuries as the central banks and banks overall are exiting stage left. And that marginal buyer is U.S. investors, it's U.S. retail investors. They buy the most bonds when stocks are at their bottom. We've seen this happen cycle after cycle. And what this is telling us is unless rates start coming down, stocks are going to massively unwind until the U.S. investors who are the last buyers start at coming to the table and gobbling up all these bonds. What we can see, it's still not clear yet who that will be. No, it is clear. We know, but we know they're going to be a lot more price sensitive. No, they're not because they're going to be bailing on stocks. And here we can see that this is very unusual at this point in the stage. We should see interest rates coming down. Here we have the Wilshire 5000 price index in red overlaid against 10 year treasury yields. And we can note in periods of declining stock prices, here you can see going into the dot com bubble. What do you, what do you know? Yields are falling. Here we see going into the great financial crisis, market heading down, yields falling. What do we know going into what was going to be a likely global recession go heading into the pandemic? We see the market flatten out, yields come down. What do we see now? Market coming down and yields rising. And that's bad news for the economy who needs anything such as lower energy prices, lower interest rates, anything to take off the pressure. And if it doesn't happen, well, that base case that Morgan said of perhaps just a slowdown is going to turn into a financial shock and another financial crisis, meaning all those automobile loans that are stacked up on these banks and in these bonds, well, might not be worth hardly anything. And with that, I'm Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.